Hi, uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to show you the file setup for uh, Roland TrueVis. And if you're not familiar with the Roland TrueVis, it will both print and cut for you. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set up the cut path in Adobe Illustrator for your work. All right, um, before we get started though, uh, a uh, Roland TrueVis uh, supplies you with some plugins that you need to install on the back end of Illustrator. So I'm going to minimize this for a second. So right here on my desktop, I have uh, the Roland VersaWorks and the Roland Color System Library. And all I'm going to do is choose Edit and copy those two items. I'm going to go into my Finder. I'm going to go under Applications, Adobe Illustrator presets, ENUS, and then swatches, and then I would do edit and paste those two items. Now I already have them in here, so I'm actually gonna just stop, um, but you, you would paste those right into there. All right, so now I can shrink that down and I can come back into Illustrator. And I'm gonna show you uh, three different ways of generating a cut path uh, for your file today. Uh, we're going to work with uh, both vector and raster images, um, and I'm also going to touch on uh, if you want to uh, add a bleed to your cut path. So, all right, so here we got Baby Yoda, and I'm going to file place, and I'm going to grab these two images. All right, so before I get into generating the cut path, uh, I already have my layers open, uh, but if you didn't have them, you would choose window layers. And I'm going to do a new layer right here, and I'm going to label this one cut path. And I'm gonna say, okay. Uh, my other layer is already labeled as sticker. That's gonna be my sticker layer. Um, one thing I do like to do is I, I sometimes like to lock this temporarily just so that way I don't accidentally move it. And But my cut layer, my cut path is uh, highlighted. And so for the TikTok one, since I'm dealing with just a square, uh, I can actually use my shape tools and I'm gonna use the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag. I can always hold shift to make it a perfect square. And I'm going to, uh, kind of center this right over my design here. All right, so that's good. Now, uh, if you notice in the corners here, this little circle will actually help round the corners of my shape. So I can drag this. So if I really want to mimic that overall shape of the logo here, uh, I can add some rounded corners. So this path I just generated around uh, is going to be my cut path. All right, the next step would be uh, to actually open up those uh, uh, little drivers we installed. So I'm gonna go Window, Swatch Libraries, and then Roll in VersaWorks. Now there's a few different swatches here for different uh, things, but the one we need is actually this magenta one. And you can see when I hover over it, it says Cut Contour. So the Roland uh, TrueVis reads this swatch and instead of printing, it will actually cut that shape instead. So I want to uh, apply this and I actually, I like to do it as a fill color and um, when we print, but I'll actually leave it like this so we can see our artwork for now. And then I'll, I'll, we'll uh, switch it around at the end. All right, so really simple for a, a nice logo like this, all right? Uh, the next one I'm working with would be uh, the pizza logo here. Now I'm gonna temporarily unlock this now we're obviously dealing with a more unique shape. Um, if you're good with the pen tool, you could take your time and trace by hand going around. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit uh, quicker of a way that I, I like to use. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy my image here and I'm actually gonna lock back that layer and I'm gonna jump back up to my cut path and I'm gonna say edit and I'm gonna do a paste in place, which put a copy of my pizza right on top. So if I move this, you can see I actually have two of them here. All right, so now I'm actually gonna use uh, image trace. 
So I'm going to do object image trace make. And now I'm going to go under window and I'm going to pop up uh, my image trace settings here. And ultimately I just need this outside edge. So I'm going to adjust this uh, to fill in uh, a lot of our detail there. So I have less to delete and I can always tweak things. All right. I think that's pretty good. I can close this and now I can click expand right in the top middle or I can choose object expand does the same thing. And I'm going to say, okay. All right. So right now you'll notice I have a question mark because I didn't ignore my white. So there's white shapes here and there's white shapes uh, on the inside. So I need to get rid of those. So I'm going to object ungroup. All right. And I'm going to do that until it's grayed out. Uh, you'll see I can hold shift and I can grab those three white pieces there and I can hit delete. Now I'm going to switch to my direct selection tool and I actually want to click on one of these anchor points. And I, if I hit delete twice on my keyboard, then that will get rid of those. So if I take this shape and kick it to being an outline, you'll see it's sitting literally right on the edge of my pizza. All right. So I like to have that uh, white border when I'm making stickers. So what I want to do now is I can actually uh, thicken up my stroke here. And I can even give myself a fill color here. So depending upon how thick I make that stroke, that's how much it's going to offset my cut. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to say object expand and I'm going to say, okay. So now you'll see it gave me more paths on the inside and outside. And now I'm actually going to use my pathfinder, which is window pathfinder. Now, when I open up this pathfinder, uh, all I'm going to use is this first one right here, which is unite. And it's actually going to merge all those shapes together. So now if I kick this back to being an outline, you can see my path is offset from my actual image and it's given me a nice white border. Um, and then the very last thing I want to do is I want to apply um, my cut contour swatch, which is right here. So I apply that and now you'll see that's the shape that will get cut. All right. Last one I have here is Baby Yoda. Now, Baby Yoda is my vector image here, All right, Both of these images were raster, which means I dealt with pixels. And with this vector image, the nice thing about a vector image is the path already exists. So first thing I want to do is unlock my uh, layer. So now I have access to my paths. And what I'm going to do here, well, I'm actually going to use my selection tool. And if I double click uh, into this, it will bring me into isolation mode. All right, once I get just that outside path, I'm going to, oh, it's not grabbing it for me. I'm going to copy that. So we'll do edit, copy. And I'm going to get up to my cut path. I'm going to do edit, paste in place. So you can see I copied just that outside path. Uh, so if I kick that to be in an outline, uh, that would work. Um, I'm going to apply my uh, cut contour to that. All right, but with this third one I mentioned earlier that I want to show you how to do a bleed. So the difference is here we have white space. All right, now with a bleed, that means we want our color going right to the edge. All right, but if we go uh, and have this cut out by the Truvis, there is a chance that our cut path is off. And if it is off, I don't want to see white. I want there to be black. So I'm actually going to come back to my sticker layer. I'm actually going to lock my cut path temporarily. All right. And I'm going to click on baby Yoda here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I need to make sure that this is ungrouped because I only want to do this to actually my black shape. So I ungrouped it. I'm going to click off of it and I'm going to click back and you can see I just have black here. All right. Now, this is a different trick rather than what I showed you on the pizza where you could add a stroke and expand it. I'm actually going to use object and I'm going to go to path and I'm going to say offset path. So now if I turn on my preview, you can actually see it's just adding extra black to the outside. It's actually doing it to the inside as well, but that's underneath the other colors we have here. Uh, so we don't see it. All right. And I can, um, you know, adjust this to however much I want to add. 
Uh, I think that's plenty. Um, usually it's not off by more than like a, a 16th of an inch uh, for, for most cuts if you set up the machine properly. All right, so I'm gonna say okay. And now I can see that magenta line there, that is going to be my cut path. All right, so I'm going to come back to my layers and I'm gonna unlock that. And on my layer here, if I actually click this circle at the end of the layer, that will actually select all the objects on that layer. So it just selected all my cut paths and I'm going to flip all of my cut paths so they're all filled in. And I actually like to put my cut path underneath what I'm printing. Um, that way I make sure I didn't actually ruin any of my images. Um, and the machine will still read it whether it's on top or underneath so that doesn't make a difference. And the last thing we need to do here um, is we need to save this out as an EPS file. So I'm going to choose File, Save As. And I'm going to go under here under my format. And I'm going to choose Illustrator EPS. And then I'm going to hit Save. And I'll hit Continue. Say so, OK. And that is it. That's how you set up a cut path. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching.